Thank you, everybody, for joining me. My name is Kyle Posey. I am joined by the latest 49ers free agent signing, Miles Hartsfield. Miles, appreciate you joining me. How's how's life, man? How's it going? Everything's going well, man. Just over here in this cold weather in Jersey, <laughs> trying to get to that warm weather. You got to get out west, man. Uh, cool. The cold doesn't exist out here, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I went out, when I went over there for the um, to do the um, the evaluation and sign and all that, they were like, yeah, this is cold as it gets. I'm like, 50 degrees? I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, yeah like do that. that's, that's, the, that's the low bar. Um, Yeah, so, okay, let's talk about first. So I was at the combine, and I asked this kid from Mississippi um, about Big Crit, and he, like, froze. He couldn't give me a song. He couldn't give me anything. <laughs> You're from Jersey, so – I, I grew up like I was close with a dude who like he he swore Joe Budden was the best thing smoking, man. Um, so we got Budden, you got what ASAP, you got White Club, you got some some names. So yeah. when I say Jersey, what does that mean to you music wise? Ooh, music wise, it's the original, it's the original, you know, Sugar Hill Gang back in the day where, okay. where the where the rap first rap album started. And I used to in college I took an Af African American studies class, and that's the first thing I all I heard was jersey and first album sugar hill gang i bet now i know my history uh but you know when you think of jersey you think of like the i think when me in my generation i think of jersey club music so all the, the little oozy stuff that he's doing now with uh you want to rock that's all jersey music uh and he'll say it like he used to hang out with dudes in camden right over the bridge so when i think of jersey i think of fast beat kind of what florida does but you know jersey's really the originator of all that Am I gonna see you at OTA practices TikToking like uh, Uzi does? Uh, I don't TikTok. I just hit my little Jersey club dance. I might sharp bounce here and there and okay. call it a day. <laughs> um, okay, well let, let's talk about your story. Let's tell 49ers fans who you are. Let's start with draft weekend. What was that like for you? What were your expectations heading into draft weekend? Um, for those that don't know, you're undrafted. Obviously, you got signed, and I mean it's been good since. But what what was that weekend like for you? It was it was kind of all, all over the place because during my combine process, when I came out of college, I wasn't invited to the combine. I wasn't invited to any senior bowl games. I actually had a dislocated rib from my last game um, versus Mississippi State. So I was like just getting right back into it. And then, you know, you go through this process. You, you want to get that opportunity to play at the next level to showcase that pro day, at least. And my pro day was two weeks away and it got canceled because it was COVID. So I went to my, my my one of my best friends pro day at Monmouth University here in Jersey. And I was supposed to leave out probably like that Wednesday. And it I get a call. Yeah, we're canceling pro day. And then everything just started getting closed. Then luckily, um, the place I trained at here, Jersey Test Football Academy, had a pro day. And I, I was able to you know get it recorded. And my agent took it, I guess, sent it to some people that he knew in the scout world. Um, and then, you know. Next, it was just like, all right, stay ready. And then um, the draft came around, and I knew, you know, day one, day two, I wasn't going. I'm like, all right. Day three comes, and, you know, you get a couple calls from coaches like, oh, yeah, you know, we got some interest in you. They start, you know, pumping up your head. But then you just got to stay level. I was just around a bunch of family and friends that really kept me um, – kept my kept my dreams alive, you know, just kept talking. Like, you're going to get a shot. You're going to get a shot. Um, and then I get a call from actually the coach who recruited me at Temple, who was actually Coach Rule's right-hand man, our DB coach that was with us for two years, three years, um, Evan Cooper. Like, yo, we got an opportunity for you here at Carolina, um, you know, if you want to take it. And I was like, shoot, I've known these guys since I was a freshman in high school. I was like, there's no better opportunity to go showcase and actually get an opportunity because it was COVID to then to go where they were. Um, then went, went there and, you know, just, you know, progressively started getting more, more, more reps and all that stuff. If it was an offense or defense, I was, I was taking it all I was playing running back with Christian in the same room and then also playing safety and nickel in the same practice. So it was pretty cool. That's insane to do. So most high schoolers struggle to do that. Um, the best of the best college players do that, but we're talking like at the pro level, that's just unheard of. So you, I mean, you went four three nine. You jumped thirty eight five. So we know mm -hmm. like the athletic baseline is is well above average there. But how like how did running back come about? Like how did they even approach you on that? 
So Coach Rule actually recruited me at running back coming out of high school. So I was a running back that turned DB because I didn't have the best catching abilities, you know, as they say, you know, <laughs> you can't catch to go play defense. Um, so once I got to prep school, I kind of changed into a, a DB. Um, but, yeah, Coach Rule recruited me at running back. And the running back assistant coach, EJ Barthel at that time, was actually the uh, – was actually the running back coach that recruited me at, at Penn State at the time. He was one of the recruiting coordinators. So he they all knew I could play running back. So it was, you know, it was COVID. So you couldn't bring guys in and out for tryouts. A few guys were going down. And I was just stayed after practice one day. And Coach was like, let's see if you can do these running back drills. And I'm like, hey, if it's going to help me make the team, I'll go pour water for somebody. I'll, you know, I'll do anything. So went over there, killed, did good there. And then the next practice, like, I started gradually, I would go to the meetings with DBs during the beginning of camp. And then at the end of the, at the end of the night, I would be with the running backs. So it was like, I'm learning both sides of the playbook and I'm yeah. like, my head is spinning. But then, you know, I, I kind of got this like photographic memory where I can like, okay, if I read it and I keep telling myself, I just, I'd like to like, just speak about it. I can remember it. So when it came to the offense stuff, it was just like finding those key words that meant something to the running back. When it was DB stuff, it was like, okay, just putting stuff in certain brackets of like, okay, these all mean the same thing to me. Okay, they're all in one bracket. And that's how I kind of minimized the, the the struggles of learning both sides of both playbooks. I was going to say, I've seen an NFL playbook. And just after like three years, I feel like I finally got in Kyle Shanahan's butt to know <laughs> the one side, to do it again on the other side. Yeah. Every day during training camp, as you're trying to make the team, sounds like an impossible job, man. But uh, let's let's kind of segue to like the grind of the NFL season. What what do you think the biggest difference for you was coming from college, going to, I mean now you're, well, I mean not now, but you're playing multiple positions. So what what was the biggest struggle, maybe aside from learning both sides of the playbook? The struggle, um, I would say you definitely, well, rookie, you definitely hit that rookie wall of you know you get past those 10 games and you're like damn we got seven more games like is this season ever going to end um but you know you get through that struggle in the second year and third year um the struggles is just trying to stay healthy you know in the, the league you know the it's not only the best players are going to play but if you're available those are the people who usually stay around the longest so you know just keeping my body healthy and up to shape to where it can withstand a whole season of you know, playing nickel, playing safety, playing linebacker if I need to, playing running back if I need to, playing all special teams. Um, that's that's where that grind is. It's just staying, trying to stay healthy the whole year, I would say. Yeah, so Kyle Shannon talked about that a couple months ago where he was, like he used Drake Jackson as an example, their second round pick from last year where he, he said he hit the rookie wall and he believes that most young players struggle the most when it comes to like nutrition, um, just like taking care of your body, knowing that you said after those 10 games, we still got another half season to go. Like we're just really right. uh, warming up here. So did you, did you feel like uh, you had to change your nutrition? Um, yeah, I ended up doing a, a little bit of changes that, uh, that, that I've seen that progressively have gotten me more healthier this off season, trying different things from different meal preps, um, eating more vegetables. You know, I, I do terrible at eating vegetables, but really made an emphasis of really eating more vegetables and more greens and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's definitely, you could definitely see the difference in your, your day-to-day abilities and your day-to-day health and how you just feel as a person, like waking up in the morning. What was the, the one veggie that was hardest for you to, to get, you know, like, asparagus I, yeah. I i guess asparagus uh i looked at it i was like i don't know if i could eat this but i was like you know i'm gonna do it anyway <laughs> you, you gotta cook it man you can't do it raw just uh, let it sit right. in that pan right okay let's talk about some of some of the teammates now so you talked about playing with christian mccaffrey in the running back room i i don't know if 49ers have asked you about playing running back um hopefully um it doesn't get there hopefully it doesn't get to that point right <laughs> Uh, what was it like playing with Christian McCaffrey? What's he like in the meeting rooms? What What is something that we may not know on the outside that that you would obviously by you know working with him? Oh, he's a he's a character. He's a funny guy. He's a a dude, but that lead. Not only does he hold everybody accountable, but he, but he leads by that. Like he'll show you better than he could tell you. Um, he'll show you that he's the first first one 
to, you know, start lifting, last one in the weight room, always taking care of his body. So he doesn't just preach it like take care of your body and do all these things and, you know, practice hard, but he's actually doing it. Um, you know, when the the years that in Carolina I was with him, it's just he just showed, you know, he just showed us better than he told us. Like a lot of people preach it, but don't actually do it. Where you actually see him preaching it and doing it. So it was pretty cool to see a top tier player like that doing exactly what he's telling other people to do. What about Sam Darnold? What were your exposures like with him? Sam is a a, a, a cool, you could tell Cali dude, laid back. Um, but Sam is funny. Sam, <laughs> he'll crack his little like dad jokes and stuff like that. Uh, but Sam, he's a cool dude. I, I like, you know, I mess with Sam a lot. He's a we we had we had some funny moments where Sam will just he'll say something you won't even be looking at him like uh, and he'll like turn around like I didn't say that like <laughs> but he's he's definitely a great dude um and I think he you know I think he's it's a great opportunity for him to be over here back closer to home where he's from and all that stuff yeah I mean in the locker room the 49ers seem like they get along really well I, I I imagine having that kind of spirit, that person who can just keep it light, right? And um, that kind of helps the brotherhood grow stronger. Uh, Steve Wilkes, defensive coordinator. You obviously played under him. You're going to get another chance. Why he's not a head coach is probably another question we could have. Um, probably yeah. talk about an entire podcast on that. But what what was it like playing for Steve Wilkes? And what what can the 49ers expect um, getting getting this kind of defense, this caliber of defensive coordinator? Yeah, well, the day I got the call from Coach Wilkes when he became the Car well, Carolina's DB coach, I was like, no way. Like, you know, you heard, you hear Steve Wilkes, you, you know, you heard about, you know, him when he was at Arizona and all these different places when he was at, when he was in, uh, at the Panthers before and all that, all the stuff that he left, the legacy he left there. Um, you know, I was just excited. You know, everybody was telling me, oh, you're going to get so much better with him. He's going to, he's going to teach you things. And literally from day one, he taught me. Like he he told me stuff that I didn't even think of on the field. So like the ins and outs, the detail that he, he projects with, and the the accountability that he holds everybody accountable. You know, you get around some coaches uh, in the college level, high school level, NFL level. They're scared to talk to the high profile guys. They're scared to tell them how they really feel. Where Coach Wilkes is like, I care about you so much, so I will tell you how it is, and that's all you can ask for from a coach. A, a coach that can actually is not afraid to make the, you know, do who makes a, this much made it compared to a dude who's, uh, you know, a rookie contract. They're going to be talked to the same. They're going to be treated the same because he wants everybody to appreciate that he, he's a real dude and that he's an honest dude. And from day one in Carolina, I could a testament that he is truly a real dude. That's what coaching is, right? It's coaching is communication. You could be the smartest man in the room, but if you can't get your point of view across to um, DB7, you're worthless, essentially. Like, what what right. value uh, do you have? So that's great to know. And, I, you know, we don't know on the outside much about Wilk. So hearing that he's willing to go the extra mile to talk to um, DB1, DB2, DB3 the same way, that means yeah. a lot, and I imagine it's going to help um, just the entire 49ers DB room grow quite mm -hmm. a bit. So you you signed with the 49ers. What was the free agency process like for you? Uh, why did you choose the 49ers? Is, and I imagine this is your first extended time on the West Coast, right? Yeah, I've, I've probably been to the West Coast, played here once in college versus Cal. Then played in LA twice, so it's probably this is literally that was literally my fourth time ever being. Wow, college. yeah, yeah. It's it's. I was like, I'm getting in. I'm we're flying in. I see all these different. You know, I don't see those kind of trees. I'm like, <laughs> I could get. I could. I could. I could. I could get used to this. You know, the weather. I walk over to what was it? Um, what's the? Is it In and Out Burger or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I walked over there. I was like, what's the hype about this? I'm like, all right, we're gonna try this. I tried what'd, that. What'd you think? It was pretty cool. The sauce was pretty – it was different. It's different. Yeah, that's the best uh, way to put it. It's very different. So it's different people, out here, you don't man. See people in like, you don't see people in, like, uniforms like that anymore. That's true. <laughs> you know, with the, with the hat, the whole – everybody's wearing the same thing. I was like – this reminds me of, like, an old-style, like, McDonald's where everybody used to have some – the same uniform on. <laughs> so – what, like how how did you arrive at the 49ers um where you have other offers were you mulling other offers how'd you come to the conclusion that you were going to sign with the Niners yeah I kind of thought about it with my agent and you know through the process um 
we just thought that the 49ers was the best opportunity to go in. You know, again, every year for me is a prove it year. Um, no, regardless if I if it was the third year in Carolina where I knew I was going to get some playing time at the nickel and, and safety and all that stuff, or if it was rookie year, I, I'm always on a prove it year. I'm always on like I'm not going to make the team. So I try to prove why I'm here because um, I feel like that's the only way you can stay relevant in this league is to always think that your job can be taken at any time. So I thought the best opportunity, you know, with Coach Wilkes and how this defense did last year, the defensive line, being behind that defensive line makes a DB's life way easier. Um, so I thought and my agent thought that this was the best opportunity for me to go not only get on the playing field, but improve as a player. Um, at the safety position, nickel position, whatever position it is, um, just to go learn from people that who've been doing it, from linebackers like Fred and all those guys, and also just from, you know, getting another year under Coach Wilkes because all the stuff that I learned, I'll be able to improve on those little things that what I didn't do so good at in those years in Carolina. Yeah, I mean, if if you can catch and you're in position, you're going to have a lot of opportunities on this defense, right. man. They, the quarterbacks give DBs plenty of opportunities to make plays. So you were talking about um, nickel, a little post safety. I know you played both uh, under Wilkes, which matters. I mean, that's really all we should be focusing. Do you have an idea of where you're going to start out at? Uh, did What did they talk to you as you're signing? Where are you going to be? Um, pretty much, you know, safety and then being able to get a shot at nickel. Um, same how I've been at. Um, I think the – you know, just an opportunity to just, you know, showcase that I can do multiple things, you know, in Carolina versus Cal, uh, versus um, the uh, the Rams last year, I played corner. JC was following Cooper Cup. So when Cooper Cup went inside, I played outside. So just being able to showcase that versatility and knowing that they have a guy that's going to stay healthy, try to stay healthy throughout the whole year and be able to step in where if, you know, if a safety goes down, I could go back to safety, you know, nickel, you know, dime, all that thing, all that. And then also with the special teams, I I earned my way on the field playing special teams and I will keep playing special teams. And, I, you know, I really cherish that 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 realm of football because it's the forgotten realm. It's, you know, everybody always focuses on offense and defense, but usually a Super Bowl team or a team that's winning a lot, their special teams is in that top five category. And I really pride myself on, you know, being a gunner, being a, you know, kickoff, a five, a center on kick return and all that stuff. Um, so I just can't wait to showcase that I'm very versatile and, you know, a, a team player that's willing to be plugged in wherever is needed. Yeah, the 49ers, they've made a lot of investments in special teams over the past couple of years because they weren't very good at it. And then they've slowly but surely improved. And Sometimes it's as simple as adding guys who just want to tackle or who are just willing to run fast and do their job. Right. And, um, like that, looking at your numbers, looking at the way that you play, seems like you'd be a good fit there. If you could narrow it down to one, um, if I said, all right, you are going to play single high or you're going to play in the slot, what would your answer be? I will say in the slot. I'll definitely think I'm a. I like being around. I like being that. I like being in the box. I love being taken. I know it's a crazy thing for a DB to say, but I love taking on you know offensive guards, tackles. I might not win every time, but just to be able to get dirty and you know actually hit with my pads and all that stuff, I really enjoy reading. Uh, reading the run. Um, reading run pass, and when it's run, and it's time to trigger. Just shoot the hole. Make those tackle for losses. Um, or just, you know, box a guard and make somebody else make the tackle. Yeah. Um, I, I truly, truly enjoy that, that, the grind, that grittiness of being in the box. So let, let me know if you disagree with this, because I feel like the way that the NFL is trending, like that nickel position, like those guys are about to be paid uh, moving forward. And I think yeah. that's going to be where teams start to put their best DB. I mean, the Rams started to do it with Jalen Ramsey a little bit. You mentioned um, J.C. Horn traveling into the slot with Cooper Cup, like if you can't fit the run there, like it's going to yeah. be way more than um, covering slot fade because if, if you can't right. tackle, if you can't take on a block, because all teams are going to do is throw now screens, bubble screens, quick slams, yep. like all those things, hot reads. Um, If you can't play hot coverage there, you don't have a chance to play in the slot. So you, you right. mentioned just tackling, being physical. That is the name of the game. The 49ers, they do a really good job of that. They have the past few years 
um, both blocking on offense and then taking on blocks defensively. So it sounds like you you at least have the right mindset um, in that sense. So it's not true, but it's not not true when I say this, but I swear teams just sign players who had good games against them. Javon Hargrave, like he killed the 49ers in the FC championship. When you played in Carolina, uh, in Carolina against the 49ers this past year, you were targeted four times, only gave one catch, had four tackles. Do you remember that game? Yeah, I remember that game. It was it was a tough it was a tough um week before because the 49ers with um was the use check and all the um all the motions and all the different things they do with the 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 run action. You know, one person's going this way, this person's going that way, it's a bubble screen over here. So you just gotta be we had to be really sound and really confident and know what defenses what can hurt what defenses. Um so I remember that week. Um but yeah, I was mostly in the nickel. I was mostly nickel that week. Um, and they were just, you know, we were just watching film and it was just little keys that, you know, I had, I remember um, uh, Debo had a little tunnel screen that was coming to him. And I told JC, I'm shooting this. Me and JC having a conversation on the right hand side, going away from our, our, our um, end zone. Um, and we're like, all right, we're going to, he's like, I'm, I'm, I was like, bro, I'm shooting this. Shot it and then it was an incomplete. I was, you know, got up, muscled up, something like that. Um, but yeah, it was a that was a good game. That was a really good game. It's crazy thinking about what you guys on the outside in the nickel, wherever you are, have to process. How quick you have to process. Um, we're talking about QB snaps, one, two, three. You're reading yeah. here. Um, you're reading whatever angle departure is here. You have to worry about this guy going in motion um just reading two to one whatever you were doing it is pretty yeah. nuts to think about I, I don't think people understand how complex it is for dbs over the course of even like two series you could be playing yeah. man coverage you could be um in cover two you could be playing quarters you could be blitzing off the edge like you can do yeah. damn near anything and everything yeah. and, and still if you get beat on one play you're the worst player in the world. What do you, yeah. what do you think it's like? What, they remember is, that one play. They don't remember the 10 plays before yes. that where you were, you know, you yeah. impacted in some type of way, but you know, it's the, it's the life we live. So what's that like? Do you, I don't know. I don't want to say enjoy it because nobody enjoys it, but I know you have to get like critique feedback from fans knowing that everything we just talked about, you could have just taken on a block and gotten the defense to second and 10 and they're able to get off the field on third and long because of that play. But that second and seven slant you gave up in the second quarter, man, that's that's what we really want to talk about. Yeah. It's a, you know, being a DB, it's tough. It, it ha you have to, I remember uh, Coach Coop, um, Evan Cooper, who's now with Coach Rule in Nebraska as his DB coach. Um, playing, D, playing DB, you have to, he always used to say, you have to be like water. You just got to flow with it. You just got to go with the flow. Oh, kind of just – you can't let anything disturb you at any time because you could be – you can't get too high. You can't get too low. You just got to be like water and just, you know, stay stay level and stay, stay smooth. If I were to ask you what type of person are the 49ers getting, so like outside of football, what, what would your answer be? What, what, do, what do 49ers fans have to look forward to? A fun, energetic uh, – young dude uh from jersey uh you know a dude who's actually gonna not only be a person that they can account on on the field but off the field is going to do uh try to do a lot of things in the community from foundation stuff from you know going to talk to kids i love being a mentor um you know if it's impacting one person at a time and that person impacts another person it just spiral effect and you know i really feel passionate about the mentoring side of because you know it won't be an NFL NFL stands for not for long so while I have this opportunity I really uh take advantage of impacting because it opens doors that a lot of people can't get in so just being able to open more doors for young black men young white men all this whatever it is um and be able to help them be the best person they can be I really enjoy that but you know, dude who loves playing video games. Video games is my your gamer my passion. Oh yeah, big big gamer. Call of Duty, Madden, 2K, Hogwarts right now, Rainbow Six, whatever you name it, I play it. Do you, do you play with yourself um, in Madden? Do you put yourself at running back? 
So I try not to because I feel like sometimes <laughs> my, my boys be like, yo, you so, trying to you trying to show off? You trying that's to show a yes, off? I'm like, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I actually, uh, I actually did use San Fran, but then everybody be like, yo, you cheating? You got the best team in it? I'm like, all right, yeah. so I can't use anybody at this yeah. point. So then, then we just start doing randoms and whoever, whoever you give three picks, you get to pick from those three, and then it it is who it, it is what it is. A favorite player growing up. Ooh, favorite player. Um, uh, mm, like as a young young kid, or are we talking about what, what age bracket? I, I mean, have, like, you're a baby, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, a '97 kid, so like, <laughs> right? Like for me, it, it's easy. It's Dion. It's prime, and gotcha. like, that's who I saw, and that's who that was like one of the first real people I saw like showboat and like really talking to shit and backing yeah. it up, and that's what I, like, yeah. that's what I want. So I would say for me, it'd be like. Dion, um, Peter Ward, Florida State, um, Randall Cunningham, quarterback, like when he was really balling. But I'm also old, so you might have a completely different. Uh, I would say my favorite player of all of all time is Ed Reed. Oh, um, there you just go. The, just the 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 knowledge of the game, seeing the seeing it from that deep safety, made me want to go play safety. That's literally the reason I I moved because at first I was a corner. And then I moved to safety and I chose that because like, I was like, I want to be like Ed Reed. Um, so I would say definitely Ed Reed, just the knowledge of the game and being able to not, and safety is not only being able to go catch picks. It's basically the quarterback of the defense, putting yeah. everybody in position to go be successful. And I really enjoy when, okay, when last few years, when JC or DJ went and made a play and they look at me like, bro, appreciate you. You put me in that. I'm like, Ah, you did that. It's just my job to make sure you do that. So I really enjoy, you know, being the general and being able to communicate with linebackers, the nickel, the safety, and the and corner. So truly, that's pretty – Ed Reed is probably that. Well, yeah, no, I would I would say it is on the safety because you have to tell. Like, they can't see everything that you can. They don't know the number three just came to this side because they're so locked in on this – Exactly. Team, or this wide receiver's hip. So it it's definitely on the safety. Um some of the plays that Ed Reed was able to make, man, um, to get from like hash to bottom of the numbers while the ball's in the air. Like, what are we doing here? I forgot what, what play it was. I always, I always see it on, on like Instagram or like YouTubes. Um, I think it was versus the Steelers when they threw a halfback pass and he, he took it to the house, but then they called it back for uh, blocking in the back and just the range he had from, the coaches knew on the sideline, watch Ed, watch Ed, watch Ed. And he threw a pick, and Ed, they, he caught it in the end zone. He took it back, and I'm just like, bro, the the knowledge that he knew that that yeah, ball was going cool. there to go and get that from the post is, like, crazy. That's what I'm saying. People think that's, like, athletic ability, and sure it is, but that's preparation. That's film study. That's somebody who knew if I get a three-by-one, they're going to throw a swing route, and I'm going to go take that. And I don't right. That just doesn't get appreciated. Um, uh, all right. What were your initial impressions of watching the 49ers defense? Oh, a defense that goes sideline to sideline and not afraid to hit, not afraid to, you know, go to man when they needed to, but also play zone because, you know, that offense, that defensive line is going to get after that quarterback and that ball, keeping, you know, you know eight eyes on the ball while the the offense while the defensive line can hunt and you know seven eyes on the ball and just being able to stay visual so those interceptions come or those forced fumbles come and everybody can rally to the ball um you see that you see that on the defense of and it, you see the passion that everybody was playing for and it was more it it seemed like it, it was more than one person it was more than okay I'm playing for myself no I'm I might not make the play on this play but I impacted this play for this person and, you know, that's all you can ask for when playing defense. It's it's 11 moving parts in one body. Um, that's really all defense is because, you know, what a defensive end does, if he does something wrong, can affect the corner or safety. So it's 11 moving parts in one body. Yeah, you, and you notice that. And just watch them – watch the offense throw a four-yard curl outside of the numbers and take a stopwatch – and by the time he gets tackled, you'll see nine red jerseys in the picture. That, yeah. that is insane. And that's something that you really don't see at the NFL level. So right. um, obviously it's speed, it's effort. But you mentioned like the physicality, the hitting. Like They will knock 
you out of your socks, man. And and you're going to feel it. And I, I feel like over the, t- over the course of the game, um, by the time the fourth quarter comes, like the opposing ball carriers know that. And yeah, that kind of just changes their mindset. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You definitely feel the, you just feel the energy, you know, you can feel the energy on the other, like other side that, if that defense is there to really play or they just trying to keep you from scoring as much as their offense, you can tell by the energy of how they communicate. If it's, you know, if you can hear them from your sideline, you could tell if like they're really here to play or they just, all right, we just trying not to get beat. The, the thing that I appreciate the most about the 49ers defense, especially last year is uh, you talk about playing for each other, like Dre Greenlaw would make a play. You would think it was Fred Warner the way that he's celebrating. Uh, yeah. Somebody would have a sack, and the way that whether it's Eric, uh, Nick Bosa, the way that those guys are celebrating, like you would think they were the ones um, that made the play. So, in my mind, seeing seeing them kind of sell out for other people, that is how you, you kind of build a championship kind of championship kind of roster, can do. Yeah, definitely. You, once you start, once, you know, because the NFL is different from high school and college where you can kind of like grow with each other, you know, and stuff like that. With the NFL, it's like kind of changeable pieces every year. Um, but then you see how that mold, how that team, that defense molds within, you know, from first from the first game to week to week 10. How did you guys mold together? How did you become this great defense? And you see that as the, the film goes in every game, you just see it. It just gets better and better. Uh, before we get out of here, who are you most looking forward to going against one-on-one um, in practice? Because we're talking about a team with five eligibles and they can all score. So wh- who, are you, who are you looking forward to going against? Uh, you know, you know, if I'm at safety, definitely uh, Kittle. Yeah. Um, being able to, you know, just having somebody of that caliber on your team only is going to make – you know, playing against somebody else way easier. So being able to go against the best and one of the best tight ends in the in the game makes your game. You get to you find different craft because you know I'm not that big as him. I'm not that probably as strong as him. But being able to find little things that I can do, or you know, asking you know, on this route, how did you see me playing it? How can I get better at that? I'm a big you know, ask like if I'm we're practicing against each other, we're practicing against each other for to make the games easier. So. I'm all about asking an offensive player, like, what did you see? What did I do wrong that made that play a little bit easier for you so I can be better in the game? So definitely him and, you know, can't wait to, you know, just be, you know, a professional and be able to, you know, get some critiques from a person of that caliber. Yeah, I mean, going against a 6'4", 250-pound tight end who can, who can run sub 4'5", that'll – That'll make yeah. you better. That's for sure. It, it sure will. <laughs> um, yeah. I, well, I, we're we're out of time here. I appreciate you taking the time, Miles. Uh, best of luck. Um, I'm I'm sure we're gonna see some good things out of you, just based on the way that you're wired here. Iron's gonna sharpen iron, and you're gonna have every every opportunity to get better in practice. So, um, again, best of luck, and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon here. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Take care. You too.